Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. I hope you like what you see. I hope you'll consider subscribing or maybe giving this video a thumbs up. Neither are mandatory, but both are highly appreciated. And today we are doing something fun. This is a video I've been planning to do for a while. So with it being summertime and all of us quarantining, right? Correct. Um, what better time to experiment with your base routine than now? So if you've seen the thumbnail, you know what's about to happen. I'm basically first going to take you guys through my usual kind of base routine. Um, you've probably been able to tell by this point that I'm a big fan of the glass skin look. I love a very glowy base. So that's going to be the first look that I walk through with you guys. I'll put timestamps down below so you can skip to whichever tutorial you want to see, if not both of them. And then the second routine that we're going to go through is a newer kind of trend um, that I think will be very fun to experiment with. It's a very similar vibe to the glass skin look with a few key differences and we will go over those as we go. This is just the routine that I have kind of built over the years that works best for my oily combo skin. If you have a different skin type than I do or different skin concerns that I don't have, you're gonna want to adjust as you go as well. Maybe cut some steps out, maybe add some other ones in. So we are starting off with glass skin. I am more or less taking you guys through my usual uh, kind of routine for when I do my base. If you're unaware what glass skin is, this is a trend that actually came from Korea. It became really popular last spring or summer. Um, and it is basically just hyper reflective glowing skin. It's also supposed to be like perfect smooth poreless skin, but no one fucking has that. Everyone's skin has texture. It's all normal. It's all good. <laughs> Don't worry about that part. That's what filters are for. Okay, anyway. So as is the case with any kind of super glowy look, you're going to want to start with a exfoliated, hydrated base. I've just done all my morning uh, skin prep to do this, <laughs> to do this look, to give myself the best canvas I possibly can. Let me give you the basic essentials for skin prep for a skin focused look like this one. You're gonna want cleansed and exfoliated skin. Uh, for exfoliation, I would not recommend using a physical exfoliator like a scrub. Um, an exfoliator I've really been loving is the 4th Ray Beauty Clean Slate Exfoliator. It's really cool. It basically comes out like a powder and then you use it with water and it like foams up and the powder basically dissolves and it exfoliates as you go. It leaves your skin like polished, but not stripped or irritated. It's not gonna give you any kind of micro tears or anything like that because it basically turns into a foam. And like any other exfoliator is really good at, you know, sloughing off the dead skin cells and decongesting the pores. So I've been really liking that one. Um, I would definitely recommend that. You can also use a chemical exfoliator of some kind, um, AHA, BHA, PHA. Um, AHAs, I would recommend you use like in the evening, like the night before you're gonna be doing a look like this. Um, and BHA and PHA is safe enough to use in the morning. But no matter what, if you're using any kind of hydroxy acid in like a cleanser, toner, serum, moisturizer, whatever, um, always, always, always follow up with a sunscreen. You really should be wearing sunscreen every day anyway. Even if you're staying inside, if you are in a house with a bunch of windows and you've got a lot of natural light coming in, guess what you need? Sunscreen. I'm wearing sunscreen because I'm sitting in front of a big window with natural light coming in on me. So what was I talking about? Oh yeah, basic steps. Cleanser, um, some kind of exfoliator. Moisturizer, obviously, you need moisturizer. And then sunscreen. So those are your basic essentials. Whatever other kind of products you want to kind of add in to supplement, like if you need 
extra oil control or extra hydration or you have texture that is a concern for you and you need something to kind of take care of that that's going to be up to your discretion but these are the four basic things that you should have on hand to prep your skin for makeup application particularly for a glowy base. I didn't want to get too into detail about my personal skincare routine in this video because I feel like it's a bit too much and um, I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. I'd rather just tell you about the basics and continue from there. And I think I want to talk more in depth about my skincare routine in another video in the future, so yeah. Now my skin prep is all done. I am cleansed. I'm exfoliated. I went through my whole routine. I'm very hydrated and I have my sunscreen on, but now I'm going to prime because that has had some time to sink into the skin and I want an extra burst of hydration. While any moisturizer that you have on hand is going to do the job, I do recommend getting something very richly hydrating. So I have here the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Primer. This is thick. <laughs> This is so intensely moisturizing. It feels nice. It smells like coconut. It's almost kind of sticky as well as it is like moisturizing, which is what makes it so good prior to applying makeup. Any kind of like texture <laughs> Uh, that you have on your skin. Um, one of the best things that you can do to combat that before putting on your foundation or anything is moisturize it. <laughs> Hydrate your skin as much as possible. Now I do use a combo of primers and again this is just the routine that works for my skin type. You can add in or cut out whatever the hell you want. Um, but I am going to go in with a little bit of the Tatcha silk canvas primer. This is a mini of it. Um, I've been testing this out for a few months and really, really loving it. It's definitely different than I was expecting it to be, which is good because I did not have high hopes. I actually resisted trying this out for a very long time. Um, but this is really, really nice. And I tell you, just a mini of it is going to last me like two freaking years. I've been using it for months and this is how much I've used because you really just need a itty bitty little like pea sized amount. Not even, like a rice grain sized amount. And I focus that in there, right across the center of my face and up here on my forehead is where I have very obvious pores <laughs> and where I get the most oily, so. So I'm focusing it in the center of my face. I put like the most amount right here like on my nose and the inner parts of my cheeks where I have very large pores and also up here on my forehead. Those are the areas of my face where I have the most texture and they produce the most oil. So we want to take get them taken care of. And this is kind of weird, but I also kind of gently roll it on my under eye area because I have a lot of fine lines under my eyes and I feel like it really actually does kind of smooth them out. From there, from the center of my face, I'm going to kind of gently spread it out to the other parts of my face so when we blend our products over top, they'll go on smoothly and evenly and not grab onto any of our textures in a weird way that we won't like. Now, next thing I'm gonna do, and again, this is just personally for me. <laughs> if this isn't a necessary step for you, you can skip right over it. But I am going to go in with my NYX Dark Circle Concealer. It's just like a kind of light peachy color corrector. And I'm gonna take that right underneath my eyes. I'm gonna take it onto the eyelid as well, actually. Now, next thing, I'm going to do things in kind of a weird order, but again, this is just my routine that's been working for me lately. I'm going to take a cream contouring shade. This is Amber Matchstick from Fenty Beauty. And I'm going to contour my face with that. It looks like a very cool shade, but I think you guys are gonna be able to tell once I blend it out on my skin, it warms up pretty significantly. It's really hard for me to find products that don't just turn super warm on my skin for some reason. And I don't 
do that when I contour because that's going to warp the shape of your cheek. I look at myself straight on and I basically trace my cheekbone. I'm going to kind of frame my forehead situation. I'm going right underneath the tip of my nose and along either side of the bridge. Nothing too crazy. Right here under my lip. And I'm even actually going to do my jawline a little bit. So this is our situation currently. I'm taking a sponge that I just dampened with a setting spray. I used a dewy finish setting spray. I will leave whether you want matte or dewy up to your judgment. There's the word. And I'm going to take, this is the Real Technique sponge. I'm taking the shorter edge first and just kind of tapping that in. I'm being careful not to blend below the line that we created. We want everything to look very lifted and if you blend below that line, it's just going to drag all your features down. So, while I'm following the natural structure of my face, I'm blending everything upward. See how warm that looks? <laughs> I don't know why. That's a very cool toned brown shade, but on me, it just warms right up. So this is also going to give us a kind of a natural contoured and sun-kissed kind of look. And when I get to my jawline, I am kind of blending it down the neck as I go, like down into these hollows of my throat to kind of create some structure there too. And also just kind of blending that down so it looks more natural. Okay, now we are ready for our base shade, I'm going in with the NYX Born to Glow Radiant Concealer. This is the shade Pale, <laughs> of course. And I'm going to use very, very, very little of this. I have found for me personally that the key to these kind of looks working on my skin is to use as little product as possible, or at least just working in very, very light layers. It is always easier to start with less and add as you need to. And this concealer, by the way, it's actually better to do it this way with this concealer because that concealer is way more has way more coverage to it than you expect it to, I promise. So you see my placement here. Let me lean in. Yeah. And we're just gonna start blending out. So I'm basically taking whatever's on my cheek and blending it up toward here and out. kind of outlining my contour down there and barely kind of tapping over top of it. And I'm gonna start blending product onto my nose. When it comes to my base, my nose really gets like the least amount of attention because of how much texture it has. My nose is the area of my face where I like to go the lightest with product because no matter what I do with it, it will just snitch on me, okay? My nose, the rest of my face can look so natural and healthy and good. And then you look at my nose and it's very obvious that I've got makeup on, no matter what. So I just find with that particular area of my face, that less is more. 
I actually kind of find that to be the case with my forehead too. I only use, I use like the, a little bit of product on my forehead and that's really just for evening out tone. Okay, now we're going to powder. And this is also completely a personal preference thing, but I like to set my face with a blotting powder. This is my favorite blotting powder for that. This is the NYX blotting powder. And I'm just gonna kind of sweep my brush around in there. <sighs> and I'm just tapping it off a whole bunch because I don't actually want a lot of powder on my face. That's another key thing to this look. I'm focusing it on my nose and the inner parts of my cheeks. Kind of like what I did with the Tatcha primer earlier. I'm hitting the parts of my face that get the oiliest first. And I pretty much just have a pretty oily T-zone. And then blending it out to the perimeters of the face from there. So this is our base so far. You see I put that powder on, but I don't look powdery. It kind of just looks very natural. That's what I'm aiming for. I just find with powders, you want to work again, in very light layers, but you wanna go with something very finely milled that's not going to look powdery on the skin. Cause I just find that once you go in with powder that immediately makes it look like you have makeup on. So you wanna go with something that's very finely milled. I prefer pressed powders to loose powders um, for that purpose, for a reason. I think that they're generally easier to work with and just give me the finish that I'm looking for. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. Now, before I go in with anything else, I am actually going to use a little bit of a liquid highlighting situation. This is the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, you can use any liquid or cream highlighter. You do not have to use this one. This is just one that I love for this purpose. Normally I would have done this before powdering my face, but I fully blanked, so I'm sorry about that. But this does layer nicely over powders. And I'm basically going to tap it just on the highest points of my face. You could use this all over as a primer if you wanted to. Um, that's not typically what I like to use it for. I'm basically just hitting the areas of my face that I normally like to highlight with that. Just a little bit. Since I have already applied my powder like an absolute dummy, I'm going to work with a very gentle pressure. Like I'm barely touching the skin when I tap because I don't want to lift up any of the product that we've already laid down, but this generally blends over top of powders with no fuss. I'm just being precautious. Yeah, for both of these looks that we're doing, cream and liquid products are going to be your best friend um, if you want to look supremely glowy. For this particular look, I do like to layer creams, liquids, and powders just so that my base looks more natural and also lasts longer. Okay, now powder bronzer. I'm just gonna use my Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker bronzer in the shade Into Sun. It's a bit cooler tone, so much like with the matchstick that we used earlier, we're getting a contour and a bronzing all in one. You do not need to use this particular bronzer. You could use a cream or liquid bronzer if you wanted to. You could completely forgo powders if you wanted to. By the way, this is just what I do for my skin. Again, <laughs> adjust as you need to. But if you are going in with a powder bronzer, I recommend you go in with a product that is more finely milled, firmly pressed, and not overly pigmented, and so that is why this bronzer is just kind of perfect for this step for me. And I'm gonna kind of tap over top of where we put down. But yeah, that just kind of went on effortlessly. We're gonna blend more <laughs> as we go, don't worry. So yeah, we are basically repeating all the steps that we did with that matchstick earlier. We're basically just being a little less precise with it because your bronzer is supposed to be a bit more soft, a bit more blown out so that it looks more naturally like you're kind of sun-kissed. Just gonna hit the jawline. I'm going to use a very glowy finish kind of blush. You could use a matte blush if you wanted to, like we just used a matte bronzer. As you can see, I'm already quite glowy. <laughs> 
And obviously I'm gonna keep getting more glowy throughout the day because my oils are going to continually peek through. But, um, so you might look at this and think, oh, this is good, this is done. Or if you know you want a more intense highlight and you're gonna go in with a powder highlighter in a minute, you might not want a glowy blush. You might want a matte blush. You might not want blush. I can't go without blush and I typically do love a glowy finish. So I'm gonna mix these two shades from this Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Face Palette. Wow. I'm gonna focus more on the pink shade and then just kind of mix in a little bit of that peachier, highlighty shade because these are very strobing. Again, you don't have to spring for Charlotte Tilbury <laughs> or, or Fenty or any kind of high-end brands to get this kind of look. I think the thing I love so much about these is that they are shiny, but they're not super pigmented, <laughs> which is great for me because I tend to go in with a pretty heavy hand with my blushes, so. And again, I don't need a lot of blush, so I'm just barely applying this product. I'm taking it across my nose just so it looks more like a natural flush. So we've got our glowy base. We set it with a very light amount of powder. We did a matte bronzer, glowy, peachy blush. I went with the kind of mixture of the pink and peachy blushes um, because I know what colors I'm going to use on my eyes and I think that this mixture is going to complement that very well. But you use whatever blush shade you want to and again, it doesn't have to be glowy. You could go with a matte blush, especially if you're gonna go in with a powder highlight, like I'm about to. I'm actually just going to, I think, use the highlight in this palette as well. It's just a nice kind of light champagne-y gold shade that I think will complement the liquid highlighter, which is also a nice light champagne-y gold shade. And I also know that this highlight is pretty subtle, so um, it should layer quite nicely over what we've got going on so far. Wow, wait, that might be more intense than I thought it was going to be. Wow. Wow, that's pretty though. Oh my God. I do appreciate a very highlighted Cupid's bow. Some people hate it. I also really like a glowy nose. Some people hate that. It might seem kind of counterintuitive to you since I stated earlier that I have a very textured nose, but I actually find that the light reflecting off of a highlight on my nose kind of helps to distract from that. So again, it's a personal preference thing. I mean, damn. I am gonna pick up my blush brush really quick and just kinda take that over the center of my face again, but I'm very happy with this base. So I'm actually going to hop off camera real quick. I'm going to throw something on my eyes um, and my lips, and then we will come back and set our face and be done with our glass skin tutorial. I'm back. I just did some random shit <laughs> on my eyes. I set my eyebrows, I popped on some mascara, and for my lips, I'm literally just wearing a lip gloss. I didn't even line my lips. What's going on with me today? Anyway, the final step of your glass skin routine is just to set your face. Uh, again, this is something that is optional. Some people don't feel like setting sprays are necessary. I like to implement them because it just kind of helps to make all the powders on your skin meld better and look more skin-like, more natural. Um, since I have oily combo skin, I'm gonna use a combo of powders. Obviously a dewy finish setting spray, this is the one I used to uh, wet my makeup sponges earlier, is optimal for a dewy skin look. But since I have an oily T-zone, I am going to use some of my Flower Beauty Seal the Deal long-lasting setting spray uh, just down the center of my face. And then I'm going to hit the perimeters of my face with this guy. This is also from ColourPop, the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Setting Mist to go with the primer that we used earlier. I love both of them. 
So I just kind of douse myself in those, give them a minute to set, and then you're done. Let me zoom you guys in. And that is your glass skin tutorial. Again, I probably use more steps than you are willing to go through to achieve this look. I'm sure you could cut some stuff out and get something fairly similar. This is just the routine that works best for me, especially on days when I need it to last a long time. And since I live in Las Vegas, where it's damn hot in the summertime, um, if I go out of my way to do my makeup, I want it to last me a while, so. I like to layer liquids, creams, and powders for that purpose. So that is the end of this tutorial. Let's move on to the next one, which I'm very excited about. We're back. It is the next day, <laughs> and today's look is gonna be something a little fun and different, or at least it's something you guys haven't seen me do on this channel yet. So we covered glass skin in the first part of the video, which is more or less the way that I currently enjoy doing my base, but today we are doing dolphin skin. So dolphin skin is all the rage, or at least it has been for the last uh, month or so. I think actually I started seeing it start to pop up in like spring, but it's really ha been having its heyday in like the last month or two. Um, dolphin skin is essentially the wet skin look um, on the glass skin level is the best way I know how to describe it. Very intense, very, very, very damp. You thought I was going to use another word, didn't you? Dolphin skin is essentially the hot new trend this past spring and summer. Last year we had glass skin, obviously glass skin is still very popular, but last year was when it really hit big in the makeup world. And this year we have dolphin skin, which basically means skin that is again smooth and poreless, which no one has, I would like to reiterate. I definitely don't have smooth, poreless, perfect skin. But skin that is just like practically like just super smooth and rubbery and slick and glistening like a dolphin skin. That's where the name comes from. So it is essentially a very, very, very intense wet skin look. So basically the key thing for this section of the video, this particular look, is we are going to use as little powder as possible. That's how I'm choosing to do it. I would like to actually reiterate, you can use powder products if you want to, to create a glowy look. I'm just trying to follow this, the steps of this particular trend and see how it turns out. This actually isn't a very foreign concept to me. The wet skin look was one that I did kind of a lot last spring and summer. I was going through a hardcore, absolutely no powder phase. I thought powder was the devil. I go through phases. Um, but I haven't done it this year yet, so I'm confident in my ability to do it. It's just been a while, and I'm very excited. So my skin... Let me zoom you in. Not out. There we go. My skin is cleansed. Uh, it is also moisturized, and I have my sunscreen on. But there is an extra step that I added in, and this is specifically for my oily skin people. Um, I did include the e.l.f. Oil Control Liquid Lotion. I love this guy a lot on days when I really need my base to last and I need my oil levels in control. This does contain tea tree oil, so if you're sensitive to tea tree oil, now you know. Probably don't touch this. Um, but I really love this. So because today is a little to no powder day, I do like to take extra care with my skin prep to make sure that my oil levels are going to be in check and my makeup's going to last all day if I needed to. That's not necessarily the case today, but you know what I mean. So this step is optional. It's specifically geared toward my more oily skinned audience. I myself am combo oily, but basically what I did was I sandwiched this guy in between my serum and my moisturizer. Uh, let me just get you back out there. That's about where you were before. Anyway, um, we're not done prepping the skin, though. So that was something I did when I did my AM skincare routine prior to filming. Now we are going to prime the skin a little bit more. 
I'm actually gonna go in with another product from e.l.f. that I really love for oil control, basically to give myself a little extra assurance that my T-zone is going to be solid for the day. Uh, this is the e.l.f. Oil Control Primer Mist. I don't like the mister on this guy. He's a, he's a spinner. So what I prefer to do is I spray, I'm gonna shake it up first. I spray a little bit into my palm and I basically massage it into my T-zone. Really the entirety of the center of my face where I have really obvious pores, texture, places that produce the most oil. I'm even actually going to hit my eyelids because I do have fairly oily eyelids and I know I'm going to be putting on eyeshadow later. So I'm using this guy instead of the Tatcha primer that you guys saw me use. I'm really pressing it into the pores uh, yesterday because the Tatcha primer is really good for smoothing out the skin and definitely helps with makeup wear. But I personally haven't seen it make much of a difference for keeping my oil levels in check. So. I prefer to use this guy for that purpose. And since we're going in with very, very, very little powder today, I am planning to use a little itty bitty bit of my blotting powder just in the areas where I need it most, but for the most part, I'm going to avoid powders as much as possible. Since that is the case for today, um, the smoothing aspect isn't as important to me because I know my texture is just going to be on display full force no matter what. So I'm preferring to use this guy. Now, because this is going to be a very heavily glowy look, a very strobed look, and since this just kind of seems like the norm for the dolphin skin look specifically, I am going to go in with an illuminating primer. This one is the High Glass Primer in the lightest shade from NYX Cosmetics. And instead of placing it in the, in very specifically like the high points of the face, like I did with my liquid highlighter yesterday, I'm literally going to put this all over me. <laughs> this should be good. Wow. <laughs> should I put my hair up? I really feel like I want to put my hair up. Be right back. We're back. Got my ponytail up. Now I'm going to go through the next, uh, the first like three steps of my uh, base routine in the same way that I did in the first tutorial. I don't want to sit here and talk you through it again in case you already sat through the first tutorial, but I also know um, I don't want to skip it because I did give you guys timestamps in case you wanted to skip to this tutorial. Um, so what I'm going to do is instead of talking you through it, I'm just going to, I'm still going to film it, but I'm going to speed you through that part. So. I applied entirely too much of that to my jawline and I'm not really sure why. <laughs> it's okay, we'll tap over top with our concealer and everything will be fine.
Once again, I'm working in very, very light layers with very little product in each layer. And I'm applying it to the areas that need it the most and then the areas that I have the most texture, I'm not applying product directly to, I'm blending onto those areas from other areas of my face. This is just the easiest way I know how to minimize the appearance of my texture in my more problematic areas. Um, and also to create the most kind of natural seamless finish. And just like that, the jawline is passable. <laughs> so that's our skin now. I don't know if I'm gonna wanna add bronzer. I think I wanna pop my blush on and decide after that <laughs> what we're gonna do about that situation. So let me pull out the blush I'm using today. There are a few different uh, formulations of liquid and cream blushes that I would highly recommend for this step if you are looking for one. Of course, you can use just a glowy powder blush if you want to, like we did in the glass skin tutorial. Um, but if you are specifically following the steps for this particular trend and you're looking for a cream or a liquid blush, I really love the ColourPop blush sticks. Those are really, really nice. Uh, Milani also recently came out with a a uh, liquid blush in a squeezy tube that's really nice. It's incredibly pigmented, so tread lightly with that one. But those are two formulas of cream blush that I really, really love. The one I'm using today is another one that I love and that I think is a really solid dupe for the iconic London liquid blushes that they came out with in the last few months. And so that's kind of the reason why I picked this one out for this purpose is because iconic London really had their finger on the pulse of this trend, okay? Like somehow they have dominated the dolphin skin hashtag on Instagram. It's all either posts straight from iconic London showing people using their products to do the look or other people posting their looks and they're using iconic London products. Like, I don't know how they did it, but they've fully taken over the dolphin skin trend. And I think that this blush that I have on hand for today is a really good dupe, if I had to guess. I've never tried the iconic London uh, liquid blushes, but it's a very similar vibe. So this blush is from Flower Beauty. It's a pretty well-known holy grail drugstore item for a lot of people at this point. This is their blush bomb in the shade Bubbly. It's just like a perfect cool tone baby pink. And I'm going in with a little itty bitty bit on my fingertip. And I really mean a little bit because these are, oh, uh, because these are also incredibly pigmented. A little bit goes a very long way. So these are, oh, it's almost got a lilac -y undertone, which is nice because I know I want to use like lavender on my, I'm even putting a little bit on the tip of my nose. I personally like that look. You don't have to do it. This is just how I like to blush my, yeah, look, see what I mean? It actually looks more extreme in person. It takes a lot of blush <laughs> to make it actually look like you have blush on on camera, so but this genuinely is just how I like to apply it anyway, so it's fine. I'm even taking it up the temple for a more naturally flushed look, and you can see, wow. So the reason why I like this blush so much, and I think you can tell, is because it really gives you that wet skin look. It just makes your skin look so hydrated and healthy, and it blends out effortlessly like it's crazy pigmented a little bit goes a long way but once you get it blended out it is kind of perfect so again if you're looking for a blush that's going to give you that very glowy um, naturally highlighted look um, and you don't want to have to wear highlighter i would recommend this this is one of my favorite blush formulas and when i was doing the wet skin look all the time last spring and summer. This was one that I reached for a lot. I'm gonna take it across my forehead because I really want everything to blend very seamlessly. That's kind of the key to this look working. It's not as sculpted as our last look was. Of course, you can do the glass skin look and have it not be super sculpted. That's not what I'm saying. It's just, I wanted to give you guys Two very different looks. You can customize either one 
however you want or need to, to feel comfortable with it. So let me zoom you in. This is before powder. Powder is our next step. I'm going to go with a very small, precise brush. You guys actually saw me use this brush to highlight with uh, yesterday. This is the Real Techniques. It's actually a setting brush. It's actually meant for setting the skin with powder, but it's such a perfect shape for highlighting that I prefer to use it for that. So I'm going to take my blotting powder that you guys also saw me use yesterday with a bigger brush to set my whole face. I'm going to take that blotting powder on this more precise setting brush, which is clean. There's no highlighter on this. And I'm basically going to pick up a little bit of that blotting powder. I'm going to tap it off considerably. And I'm going to tap it first kind of around the nostril area, kind of up the sides of the nose and on the inner part of the cheek. Then whatever's left, I'm gonna kind of take across the bridge of my nose and up between the brows. So I'm focusing in the areas where I get the most oil, I'm starting with my nose because I think my nose is probably the oiliest, most textured part of my face, followed by my forehead, which is what we're hitting next. And it's really just the center of my forehead. So just kind of tapping over that. I'm using the lightest amounts of powder and it really does help to kind of go in with a more precise brush to make sure that you're just putting the powder where you absolutely need it. See how it just kind of smoothed the area out without totally killing our glow? That's why I really like to use a blotting powder to set my face with. I just feel like it helps to keep the skin looking like skin. So looking at where we're at right now, I'm obviously quite dewy. Um, so you can stop right here if you want to, if this is shiny enough for you. We obviously look very hydrated and all that good stuff. But I am going to apply a cream highlighter uh, because I cannot be stopped. Um, and I have a few options here. I gave myself a few cream highlighters to choose from because apparently I like to overwhelm myself. So give me a minute to figure out which one we're gonna use today. So I think I'm gonna start out with this uh, light stick from ColourPop, this is one of their cream highlighter formulas. Um, when they came out with their blush sticks, they also came out with highlighting sticks. And I'm using uh, this shade that I don't even want to try to say because you guys will totally make fun of me, but it's spelled U-O-E-N-O. -E it's basically like a light, neutral, almost kind of super light rose goldy shade. It's like a champagne -y pink. And I'm just gonna tap it. On like so, so, and tap it up with my finger. Another thing about this look that's so great um, is that you can just apply everything with your fingers. I think that you can probably do that on a regular basis. It's not something I normally do, but I'm having fun with it today. Yeah, I forgot how much I liked this formula. It's another one I haven't reached for in a while. I know that when these were launched, like the blush sticks were pretty much a hit. Everyone really seemed to love them, but the highlighter sticks weren't as well received, which I find very interesting because this is going very well. Do I like it as much as their Super Shock formula? Probably not. Um, I think it just kind of depends on what kind of look you're going for. On this particular look, we're a bit more natural. I might amp it up with a super shock in a minute because I do want this highlight to be popping when I take my thumbnail picture. <laughs> Priorities. I'm barely hitting the forehead because my forehead doesn't really need a lot of highlighting. You guys know I like a very highlighted Cupid's bow. So let me just tap it up, taking it up there. Whatever's left, I'll tap on the chin. I also don't need a lot of highlight on my chin. My chin can get pretty oily, so it's not necessary. Okay, so that's where we're at now. If you want to take it 
even further beyond. So I am gonna go in with another fave of mine from ColourPop. This is an OG, this is a favorite for a lot of people. This is their Super Shock Highlight in the shade Flexitarian. Also pretty icy, practically like a silvery champagne shade. Very, very incredibly reflective, which is why I think it's going to work great for today. I'm gonna go in with the itty bitty bitty bittiest bit of that. And I'm just gonna tap it on the highest point, oh, oh, highest point of my cheekbone. Oh no. Take it on the brow, take the excess on the brow. Really tap that out. Oh yeah, that works really beautiful on top of that other highlight. And that is that toned down. For the record, you could go much more intense if you wanted to. Like if you wanted your highlight to be seen from space, Flexitarian is like the optimal option for that. But they do have a variety of options if you want to check them out. I really don't think anyone does cream highlighters quite like ColourPop does, so I would recommend you check them out. Okay, so that is our skin. I'm happy with that. You could go bronzier if you wanted to. You could go heavier with the blush if you wanted to. In fact, if you feel like, let me show you something. I'm about to break our little to no powder rule, but I feel like this is an important note to add. If you feel like after highlighter and powder and all that, your blush is a little washed out, I think that that liquid blush will layer nicely over top of powder, especially considering we didn't use a lot of powder. But a thing that you can do to amp your blush up a little bit more and blend your highlighter into the skin more seamlessly is go in over top with a little bit of a powder blush. These are really, really, really nice glowy finish blushes. Oh my goodness, I love these so much. And this one will layer very nicely over top of that baby pink blush we already have. We are going to use a very small amount. So again, in keeping with working with as little powder as possible in light, even layers. We're gonna tap that off a lot and we're just barely going to tap the skin, just kind of skip it over the cheek. We're using very little pigment, just kind of trying to reintroduce that baby pink color into the skin. I'm literally using like feather light pressure on my skin, barely touching it. Just kind of trying to keep everything very seamless and universal. And there it is. A bit more life back into the skin. So that's a really good tip, actually. If you feel like your blush got a little bit washed out after powdering or after applying highlight, or you feel like your highlighter is too intense, just kind of blend over the area with your blush of choice to bring some color back into the skin. You don't totally lose the shine. We're very dewy right now. And I generally just think it's good practice to set your liquid blush with a powder blush um, because blush is typically the first thing on your face to fade away for whatever reason. So whatever you can do to make it last as long as possible is good. So I'm gonna hop off and throw on an eye look and a lip and I will be right back. And we are back. Same kind of deal as yesterday. Just kind of put some random colors on my eyes, uh, mascara, brow gel, and a sheer pink lip gloss. And we're just gonna set the face much like we did in the first tutorial, but again, I want to make sure that uh, anyone who skipped the first tutorial sees how I do this for my combo oily skin. So I'm gonna start by hitting my the center of my face with my Flower Beauty Seal the Deal Long Lasting Setting Spray. This is the matte finish one, you gotta shake it up really well before you use it. And this is just a really nice uh, mattifying setting spray that doesn't actually dull any of our carefully placed highlight or make the skin feel like dry and tight and weird. And I really do feel like it helps with the longevity of my makeup. And again, we took the extra precautionary uh, steps with our makeup prep and priming situation to control our oils, keep our T-zone in check. But since we use very, very little powder, we really want to set this down with a spray that's going to help it last as long as possible. So I'm hitting my T-zone mostly with this. Such a light, fine mist. 
I like that one a lot. And another one I'm going to use on the perimeters of my face, again, just like I did in the first tutorial, is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid uh, Setting Mist. This is a great dewy finish setting spray that I like to hit the sides of my face with and whatever lands on the center. It is what it is. Just to kind of amp up our glow. Let me zoom you guys in on the skin. I think it turned out pretty good. I miss doing these kinds of looks. I think I'm gonna start doing them more often again. Just very light on the powder. I'm also actually really liking the eye looks I wound up doing for this video. Yay. But yeah, this is our my version anyway of dolphin skin again whatever products you have on hand if you don't have a lot of liquid and cream products um it doesn't really matter you could do these looks strictly with powder products if you absolutely had to when it comes to any kind of skin focused look particularly dewy skin kind of looks it doesn't matter so much what products and tools you have on hand so much as what really matters is the health of your skin and everyone's version of healthy skin looks different. So generally I would just say, and I know some of these are gonna sound cliche and you've probably heard them a million times, but just drink lots of water, um, eat your fruits and veggies, okay? Hydrate, you know, moisturize. Don't skip sunscreen. Do not ever skip sunscreen. In fact, actually I do, I am planning to film a Sunday skincare highlight about SPF and all the various sunscreens I enjoy using. If you don't know what the Sunday Skincare Highlight is, it is a series I do over on my Instagram page that is dedicated to various skincare topics. So if you're into skincare, be sure to follow me over there. I'll link it down in the description box down below. And I do have an SPF one coming at you pretty quick. In fact, I think I'm gonna film it after I'm done filming this. So keep an eye out for that if you follow my Instagram. And you know, exfoliate once or twice a week. Nothing too crazy. There is no such thing as perfect skin. There is no one correct way for your skin to look, for these kind of looks to be achievable for you. And also just to reiterate, these are just the techniques that work for me specifically, for my skin type or that I like to do for my base personally. You might want more coverage. You might think I was too blushy or too highlighted. You might want to make it as minimal as possible. You might want to go full on glam. It is all up to you. Whatever steps you need to subtract or add in for your personal routine, please feel free to do them. You do not have to do anything exactly the way that I did them in this video. This is just what works for me. And I hope that you guys learned some tips and tricks from it and or just found this enjoyable. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, comment down below which look was your favorite. Do you prefer glass skin or dolphin skin? Which look are you going to try to recreate? And if you recreate them, please post a selfie on Instagram and tag me in it because I would love to see. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I will make sure to leave all my links to other places where you can find me down below. I will also leave a bunch of cool links down below to various resources uh, to keep you updated on what's going on in the world and how you can further educate yourself and or help with various situations happening, because there's a lot happening. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more of them, I hope you'll consider subscribing and maybe giving this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you guys back here for the next one. Bye.